Let me show you an example of how you can use EDQ's reference data writing functionality to create a set of reference data from an EDQ process that can then be used to inform a subsequent EDQ process. Okay, so we're going to work with this example here, this project called Learn Name Gender Map. And uh, let me just show you, in, coming into this, pro this uh, project, we have some stage data called Mortgage 100k Processed. Now, this um, actually has 90,000 rows despite the name. And the key thing about this is it's customer data, and uh, it has in it some first names in their own field, Gordon, Christopher, Patrick, David, Katrina, Ronald, etc. And it has genders, M, 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 F for Katrina, M, okay, etc. Now what we want to do is to look at this uh, set of stage data and we want to work out based upon this um, whether each first name is generally a male or generally a female. What's the relationship between the first name and the gender, in other words? We're going to do that in a process. And the processes, in fact two processes, are going to populate some reference data for us. And the key piece of reference data is this name gender map reference data. So note at the moment it's empty. We're going to populate it with the first name and then a gender either M or F based upon the stage data I showed you. And there are two other sets of intermediate reference data that we're going to use to get to that point. One called name frequencies, it's empty at the moment, and another one called name gender frequencies, also empty at the moment. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, there are two processes which will populate those reference data sets. And the first one is this one called prepare names, profile names, and name gender combinations. And I'm going to run that process. And whilst it's running, it'll take a little while to run. I'll walk you through a copy of that process. Um, I've just made a copy so I can show it to you whilst the, uh, the original is running. And here it is. So it's reading in from a data interface. And in our original version, that data interface is mapped to uh, the mortgage customer's stage data that I showed you with the names and genders in it. Okay, so it's reading in that stage data that I showed you. It's doing some preparation of the data, so it's doing some basic denoising here, taking out any noise characters, obviously. And it's doing some other things. I won't go into great detail, but it's excluding uh, instances where we have joint names in a name field. So we might have Jeff and Wilma Smith, Jeff and Wilma being the first name field, so it's excluding those, etc. The key thing that it's doing here is it's creating a new attribute through a concatenation. It's concatenating the first name field and the gender field. So it's putting together Christopher and M for male, or Anita and F for female, or Katrina and F for female. And in between the two values, it's just putting a separator string, which is three tildes. So we'll have Christopher, tilde, 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 M, Anita, tilde, 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 F, and so on. Okay, so it's doing that. And then finally here, there's a frequency profiler. That frequency profiler is profiling two attributes. The name gender field, which we've just created, holding the concatenation of the name and gender, Christopher tilde 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 M and so on. And it's also frequency profiling just the first name field, the original first name field. So from that frequency profiler, we're going to get the number of occurrences uh, of each name gender combination. So we're going to get, you know, Christopher is an M 100 times in this data set. And we're going to get the number of times that each name appears in the data set. Christopher appears 100 times. OK. All right. So those are the two pieces of information this profiler will give us. And you might be able to see we have this little symbol like a database here. That's showing us that the results of this frequency profiler are being written out. Okay? And in fact, they're being written out to reference data. And that frequency profiler is going to populate our first two sets of reference data. You can probably see because the process is nearly finished, they're now populated. So here, here is our name gender frequencies reference data. So we can see Aaron uh, appears as a male, M five times in the data set. 
Abdullah as appears as a male 16 times. Adele, A-D-E-L-E, appears as a female 20 times, etc. And it also um, populates this name frequencies reference data as well. That's just showing us the, the frequency with which each name appears. So Aaron appears five times in the data set, Abdullah 16 times, Adele 20 times. So from there, we have our raw material to work out a relationship between each name and agenda, because we know, for example, Adele appears 20 times, and we know that in all 20 occurrences, Adele is marked as a female from our frequency profiling. But we still need to put the pieces together. And we do that in our second process, which is called Create Name Gender Map Reference Data. This is where we're going to create this uh, name gender map reference data, still empty at the moment. Let's run that second process. So it's now running down here. And whilst it's running, I'll just walk you through a copy of it that I've made, again, just so I can show it to you. So here's the, uh, here's the process. And uh, let's look at what it's doing. In fact, I'll show you the original because it's just finished running. So I may as well uh, show you that. And then we can look at some results. At the top here, let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see a bit more. It's reading in and it's reading in from reference data from our name gender frequencies reference data. It's reading in uh, the name gender field, so that will be the Christopher tilde 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 M or the Adele tilde 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 F, etc. And it's reading in the count of the name gender field, so how many times does each combination of name and gender appear, okay? It's adding two variables, one called threshold percentage, which is set to 90, one called cutoff point, which is set to 10. I'll tell you about how those variables are used in a minute. It's then doing some parsing. And what this parser is doing, and I won't walk you through how, but uh, it's not very hard. Anyway, what it's doing is it's looking at the name gender field and it's simply parsing out the name into its own field. So it's putting that back in the field on its own there, name.parse, and it's marking it as either Y or F, depending on whether we have an M, sorry, as male, yes, or female, yes, depending on wh whether we have an M or an F at the end of the string here. Okay? All right. Now, having done that, it's doing a look up and return. It's looking up the name field, so that's just the Aaron or the Adele on its own that was created by the parser. It's looking up on our name frequencies reference data, which, remember, was created in the previous process as well. And it's going to return, if we just have a look at the results here, the count of name. So now we know Aaron, for each row we know, Aaron appeared five times as a male and Aaron appeared five times in total in the data set. Okay. We know, for example, Adele appeared 20 times as a female and 20 times in the data set. More interestingly, Agnes appeared 113 times as a female but 115 times in the data set in all. And there were two occurrences of Agnes, which were actually male, okay? All right. So we know how many times each name occurred and how many times it occurred as a, a male and how many times as a female. From that, we can calculate percentages. And that's what we're doing here. So we're just doing a little value check here. We're looking at the male.parse attribute. If that's set to Y, um, then we're saying, right, calculate the percentage male. And this is taking in uh, the name gender, count of name gender and count of name. How many times does it, is it, uh, does it appear as a male? How many times does it appear in total? And it's just working out a percentage. Okay. So out of that, we can see that, for example, uh, Abdullah appears 16 times, it's male 16 times, so therefore 100% of the occurrences are marked as male. Agnes there appears 115 times, only twice as a male, so 1.7% only of Agnes's are marked as male. In this stream, we're doing the same thing for females. So here, where the parser has seen that there's an F, um, then we're working out the female percentage. So just have a quick look at this. And we'll go down to take a look at Agnes there. There's the 113 female Agneses out of the total 115. 98.3% of Agneses are female. Okay. 
So we have the percentage of male and female. We're merging those data sets together there again, just the, the, the sort of two streams we split up, we're merging them here. If we go down a little bit in our process, we're then doing a group and merge. Now at the moment, we have a row for each name gender combination. So we'd have one row for Agnes M and one row for Agnes F. What we're doing in this group and merge is we're grouping on the name. So that will mean we just have a single row for Agnes. But in our merge, we're taking in both the percentage male and the percentage female. So now we're going to have one row for Agnes, and we're going to know that Agnes is uh, male 1.7% uh, of the time and female 98.3% of the time, or whatever those percentages were. They were slightly different to that, actually. OK. This is where our two variables come in then. So we added a threshold percentage set to 90 there, and it's used here. And here, we're looking at the percentage of each row which are male, and we're comparing it to threshold percentage, cross-attribute check, percentage male, threshold percentage. If the percentage male is greater than or equal to the threshold percentage, which was set to 90, uh, then we are passing. So we're saying, is at least are at least 90% of the occurrences of each name male? And just below that, let's make this slightly bigger again. We're doing the same thing for female there, exactly the same thing. We're saying uh, R is at least 90% of the occurrences of a name female. So Agnes should pass the female test, Abdullah should pass the male test, for example. Okay? Then we bring in our other variable, the cutoff point, which was set to 10. So we're saying here, are there at least, let's just have a look at this. So again, cross attribute check, count of name and the cutoff point, again, greater than or equal to. So are there at least 10 occurrences of a name? That's what we're saying there. Because it could be that we get 100% of, let's say, Christopher's are male, but there's only one Christopher in our data set. That's not really a big enough sample to make a decision on whether Christopher is male or female. So we'd exclude uh, names that, that, that appear less than 10 times. Okay. By the way, both of these variables are externalized, which means that if you run this process within a job, you can set the percentage or the cutoff point uh, as, a, as, a, as a variable in a run profile. Okay, So you can change the 90 or the 10 at runtime in a run profile if you want to. That's just a by the by. Anyway, if 90% or more of the occurrences of a name are male, and if we've got 10 or more occurrences of that name, then we add uh, the male gender. So we're just going to add a string attribute called male gender with a value m. If 90% or more of the occurrences of a name are female and there are more than 10 occurrences, then we add a string attribute called female gender with a value f. And there, here we just merge those two attributes. So only one or the other should be true. They can't both be true. Um, so we're just going to mer merge them here into a new attribute called gender. It doesn't really matter about the order of the merge since not you know, both those things can't possibly be true, okay? At the same time for the same same name. So now we have a new attribute. Here we go. Uh, there it is. Set to M or F. So M M M F M M M M M F F F etc. Okay. Finally. Here's the key processor, the one that it's all really about, the writer. And the writer processor is writing out the results from this process, the name into a name field, the number of times the name occurred, the percentage that were male, the percentage that were female, and the gender that we've learned from those percentages. So remember, if 90% or more were male, we can have an M in there. If 90% or more were female, we can have an F in there could be that we can't make a decision because perhaps it's 50 50 split yeah or perhaps we have less than 10 occurrences of a name so we're only going to make a decision if there's a you know fairly overwhelming percentage male or female but you can change that percentage just need to change the variable and we're writing that out and we're writing it out to reference data and to our name gender map reference data okay so having run this process then if we just take a look at that name gender map reference data. Let's click on it. Here it is. 
and it's populated now. So Abdul appears 138 times. Since 97.8% of the occurrences have the male gender, it's marked as male. Agnes appears 115 times. Since 98.3% were marked as female, it's marked as female. So that's our name, gender map reference data. We've created that reference data from our stage data. Having done that, we can use that reference data to inform a downstream process. Having learned about the relationship between the name and gender, we can use that in a downstream process. So here is our downstream process. It's called Gender Check Using Learn Gender. What's it doing? Well, it's just simply reading in. It's actually using a data interface, but uh, that is mapped to a web service, so it's going to work in real time. It's just doing some, and it's reading in, by the way, uh, a title, first name, last name, a gender. And uh, it's doing some basic preparation of that uppercase in the first name, but then it's doing a lookup and return on our name gender map, okay? On our reference data we created in the previous process. It's gonna look up the first name and it's gonna return the gender, the learned gender, if you like, from the reference data, and the percentage that were male and the percentage that were female, okay? And it's gonna write that out ultimately back to the web service here, okay? Um, it could be that we supply it with a name which isn't in the name gender map reference data because we said that you know sometimes we not, might not be able to make a decision because some names may have um, a sort of 50 50 split or at least not 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 enough uh, of that name being either male or female to make a decision or it might be that some names weren't in our incoming stage data that we created the map from and in that case we fall back on a different process which uh, is just going to derive the gender using the title okay anyway let's run this process this real-time process so that's running now okay so we're now in the web service tester and let's try out our process so uh, here we've got the gender check web service from our learn name gender check um, project. Let's put in some data in the inputs. So I'm going to put in Mrs. First name Abdul. Last name doesn't really matter what I put in there because we're not really using that anyway. And uh, gender F. Now, what's going to happen then is the process will go off and it will look up the first name Abdul in our name gender map reference data which was created in our previous two processes and it should return a gender from that uh, reference data and it should tell us it's using that reference data and it should tell us the percentage so let's hit send and here we go so it's saying well actually abdul in my name gender map reference data this is marked as a male i'm using that reference data and 97.8 percent of the occurrences of abdul in that reference data are male Okay, so it's using our learned reference data. Let's try uh, one more. This time we'll take out the, uh, the title and gender. And uh, let's put Agnes in and uh, see what happens. Hit send. And this time it's correctly saying Agnes is a female. Yes, I used the, the learned, uh, the, the, the reference data. And 98.3% uh, of Agnes is a female. And yeah, we could keep on doing this. Let's put John in and see what it says about John. And it says that's a male. 99.8% of the occurrences in my reference data were male. Okay. So there's a good example of how we can create reference data using EDQ's reference data writing capability, and then we can actually uh, use that reference data we've created in a downstream process. So it's enabling us, if you like, to teach EDQ. It's enabling EDQ to learn about the world, if you like, um, and to create reference data through its processes. It's a tremendously useful thing to be able to do.